Hi everyone and welcome back to the world of EditorX. I'm Ido and in today's video I'm going to show you how to build a design that scales proportionally. This means that as our browser width changes, the elements are going to keep their proportion and their relative position. If you're new to this channel, please give a thumbs up and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Now let's get started. Before we get started on the build, I wanted to talk a little bit about sizing and positioning. These are the basics of layouting, and by mastering these concepts, we will be able to build truly responsive designs. Here I have an image and a container inside a section. The first thing we have to understand is the hierarchy. In terms of structure, the image and the container are both direct children of the section. We can observe the relationship between elements in our layers panel. If we take a look in the inspector, we can see that both our image and container widths are set to a pixel value. This means that their width will not change as we resize our browser window. Let's change the widths of the container in the image to be fluid. Editor X will convert the pixel values to percentage. Now we can see that when we change our viewport width, both these elements are reducing in width. The image is scaling proportionally and the container reduces in width, but it has a minimum height set in pixels, so that remains the same. The percentage value always refers to the width of the element in relation to its parent element, or in the case where a grid is used, to the grid cell or cells which the element lives in. Grid is something that we'll discuss in later videos. The direct parent of these elements is the section. So the image has a width of 27.5% from the width of the section, and the container has a width of 34% from the width of the section. If we now place the image inside the container, we can see that the image size did not change visually, but the percentage value has changed. That's because it's now a direct child of the container, and it relates to it now instead of the section. There are other units that we can use for sizing, for example VH and VW. These will relate directly to the viewport height or width and not to the parent. We'll also talk about these in a later video. Now that we understand sizing, let's talk about how to position elements. In the inspector, we have this panel for positioning where we can set docking and margins. I'll drag this image inside my section and you'll see that as I move the image towards the corners of my section, the docking and the margins change in the inspector panel. This is because by default, when you move an element on the canvas, it auto docks to the nearest edge. First, let's understand margins. Setting a margin to an element is basically like adding an invisible block of content to its size. Let's demonstrate. The height of this section is set to auto and the minimum height is set to none. This means that the only thing determining its height is the content inside. In this case, this image, which is 300 pixels in height. If I give the image a top margin and a bottom margin of 100 pixels, it's basically as if I've added 100 pixels top and bottom to the size of it. And as effect, because the section is receiving its height from the content, it's being pushed to be taller. Docking is the position relationship between a child element and its parent, or in case of a grid, the grid cells. We'll use docking to position top, left, right, bottom, or a combination of those, and then use margins to set the distances from the edge of the parent. We can use the align panel to dock the image to the top and left, and put in 50 pixel margins in order to distance it from the edge of the section. This relationship between the child and the parent will remain kept no matter how I change my screen width or section height. I can also set margins in percentages, so that way the distance will relate to the parent's width. Now let's use this knowledge to see how we can create a proportionally scaled design. Here I have three images placed inside a section. I've set them up in this layout and I'm pretty happy with how it's looking. My viewport width is currently 1680. Let's see what happens when I resize. Massive fail. The elements are all over the place. 
Let's go back to 1680, where everything looks the way it should, and inspect our elements to understand what went wrong. The size of the image on the right is set to pixels, so it's not scaling at all. The width of the image on the left is in percentages, but the height is in pixels, so it changes only in width. So first, let's start by changing our images to fluid and scale proportionally, and then let's try resizing again. This time we see that our images are resizing correctly, but the position is still off. Again, let's go back to 1680 and examine the position settings. We'll dock the left image to the top instead of the bottom, and convert the value to percentage, because we want the distance from the top to also be relative to the size of the parent. We'll do the same for the two other images. Now our images and their position are scaling in a perfectly proportional manner. Now you may have noticed another issue here, where the section itself is not scaling proportionally. It looks as if it's getting taller in relation to the images. This is because we have a minimum height on our section, and that's preventing it from becoming shorter. So let's go back to desktop and remove that minimum height. As soon as I do this, I notice that I lose the gap between the left image and the edge of the section. That's because now the section height is determined exclusively by the content. So all we need to do is give this image a bottom margin in percentage, and that will push the section, but in a proportional manner. And now everything is perfectly proportional, even if we go all the way down to the lowest screen width. Now let's add in some text. We'll dock each one to the top and side, and we already learned that we need to use percentage values in order for the text to be positioned proportionally. Using a fixed font size won't work here, because of course we want everything to scale. So we will use scale text. Now here you might have to play with the values a bit in order to get it perfect. That's because text scales a bit differently than images. For my example, I found that these values work here. By the way, if you want to go in depth into how scale text works, check out my other video in which I cover this subject. I'll also leave a link in the description. I'll resize again to check that everything is scaling proportionally. Now when I get to the tablet view, I'll probably want a different design, but I still want it to scale proportionally inside this range. I'll change the height of my section, and start rearranging my elements in the layout that I want. I'll change the text scale, and make sure everything is docked to the top with percents. Finally, I'll remove the minimum height from the section, and give that lower text a bottom margin and then resize to check my work. See that the text is breaking, so I'll widen it a bit. Now it's good. So there you have it. That's how you build a proportional design in Editor X. In the final version, I also created a layout for mobile. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you next time.